Okay, everybody, today we're going to look at uh, the first type of metathesis reactions, which are precipitation reactions. So you'll want to make sure that you have your solubility rules available for you to see. Um, these guys are essentially two aqueous solutions that form some kind of a precipitate. So something is insoluble when you're done. All right, so if we take a look at exercise three, the first one, we have silver nitrate. It's AgNO3. Silver is always a plus one. Nitrate is always a minus one, so that's a good equation. We can also assume that these are going to be aqueous unless we're told otherwise. And then we also have lithium chloride. Lithium is a plus one. Chloride is a minus one. And it is also aqueous unless we're told otherwise. All right, and then this is, since we have two compounds, we're talking about a double replacement reaction. So we're now going to pair silver with the chlorine and then lithium with the nitrate. All right, so here's our equation. Um, the first thing we need to do is see if it's balanced. And in this case it is, everything is just a one. The next thing that we need to do is determine what the solubility of the products are. So if we take a look at silver chloride first, usually we look at the anion to begin with. So if you find chlorides, you'll note that most chlorides are soluble, but silver is an exception. So we're going to put a solid right there, and then we have to take a look at nitrate. Nitrates are all soluble. And then if we compare it even with lithium, lithium's a group one ion, so it's always soluble as well. So that guy is aqueous. So that is our balanced equation. For the nickel two chloride and sodium sulfide, we have essentially the same type of setup. So I'll just write it out quickly here for us. Nickel two, that tells me that the nickel is a plus two charge. And then the chloride is a minus one, so I'm going to need two chlorides. Again, it's aqueous unless I'm told otherwise. And then sodium sulfide. So we have Na, and sulfide is just the sulfur. So Na is a plus one, sulfide is a minus two, so we need Na2S, aqueous. All righty. Up next, we have a double replacement reaction, so the, the sodium and the nickel switch places. So now we have nickel 2 sulfide, so that's a plus 2 and a minus 2. And then we have sodium chloride, NaCl, plus 1 and minus 1. We need to get the reaction balanced, which it is, except for we need two NaCls. Next up, we need our solubility. We probably already know salt, NaCl, but if we want to take a look at our rules, most chlorides are soluble and any group one metals, metal ions are soluble as well. And then now we have to look at the nickel sulfide. Most sulfides are insoluble, especially when they have the heavy metal ions. So that's where we would stop there. And then we get to move on to the next and most cool thing ever that we get to play with, and that's net ionic equations. Uh, net ionic equations are essentially taking only the parts of a reaction that are actually doing something, creating something new, and putting those down as opposed to all of it. So if we look at the three definitions, what we just did for the previous two questions are molecular equations. And then what we do is we take them apart. Um, we break up anything that is in the aqueous phase, this would be broken up, this would be broken up, this would be broken up, and we separate them into their ions. And then we remove anything that is a spectator or that's not involved, it's just sitting there watching what the other things are doing. Kind of like if you go watch a hockey match. And then finally the net ionic equation is once you remove those spectators, what's actually remaining? And then here's a little reminder from our quest question the other day. There is always a conservation of charge. So you have the same mass, you have the same atoms, and you have the same number of electrons in there. So let's take a look at exercise four. 
balance each of the following equations and write net ionic equations. So we have barium chloride, Ba is a plus 2, and chloride is a minus 1, so that's Ba plus uh, BaCl2, and then sodium sulfate is Na, it's a plus 1, and then sulfate is a minus 2, so we need two sodiums. Again, we're talking about a, a double replacement reaction. So we have barium sulfate, and we have sodium chloride. Next, we have to look at balancing. One barium, one barium, one sulfate, one sulfate. So that part's good, but we have two NAs and two CLs, so we need to put a two in front of that. And then we need to look at solubility. Again, our reactants are aqueous, unless we're told otherwise. So now we just have to look at our products. Sulfates are generally soluble, except with barium and a couple of other items. So there's our solid, and then salt is aqueous. The next step that we have to go through is actually separating each of the ions. So I'm going to take anything that's aqueous and break it into its ions. So I'm going to have barium plus two ions, and then a subscript becomes a coefficient when you split up the ions. So then it's two chloride ions. Sodium sulfate's aqueous also. So two sodium ions and one sulfate ion. On the other side, barium sulfate is a solid, so it remains together. And then sodium chloride is also aqueous, so our coefficient still applies, so 2Na plus and 2Cl minus. That is what's called the total ionic equation. And then finally we go through and we remove anything that's in the same form on both sides. So if we look at the barium, it's an ion here, but it's a compound here. It has to stay. The chloride is an ion here and an ion here. So it's a spectator, it goes. Sodium is an ion and an ion, it can also go. And what we're left with, then finally sulfate and sulfate, those are not in the same form so they have to stay. What we're left with then is our NIE, our net ionic equation, barium ions plus sulfate ions makes solid barium sulfate. All right. The last one, ammonium sulfide plus cadmium nitrate. So ammonium is NH4 plus 1, and the sulfide is an S minus 2. So we have NH42S. Again, we'll assume that's aqueous. Cadmium wouldn't be soluble except it's with nitrate. So cadmium, ooh, I think that one actually might need a Roman numeral. I'm pretty sure it's a two. Okay, CDNO32, also aqueous. And that will form double replacement reaction. So cadmium sulfide and ammonium nitrate. Let's take a look at balancing. We just need a two in front of the ammonium nitrate, and now we need to get our solubilities. Ammonium and nitrate are both super soluble, so that's aqueous. Okay, continuing with the ammonium sulfide and cadmium nitrate problem, we had written out the balanced chemical equation. We needed to determine whether or not we had um, aqueous or solid for our products. Sulfides are generally insoluble, and so is a uh, heavy metal cadmium. So that guy is probably going to be solid. And then ammonium nitrate over here. Ammonium is a group one, very soluble. Nitrate is uh, always soluble as well. So that's going to be aqueous. At this point, we can split our ionic forms or our aqueous forms into their ions. So we get 2NH4 plus plus S minus two, 
This is also aqueous, so cadmium plus two, plus two nitrate ions, yields. Cadmium sulfide is a solid, so it's gonna stay together. And then we're gonna have the ammonium nitrate split as well, so I'm gonna write this below. Two NH4 plus, plus two NO3 minus. Now we have to look for our spectator ions. If we start from the left, we have NH4 on the left and NH4 on the right in the same form, so that's a spectator. Sulfide on the left, but part of the compound on the right, so it stays. Cadmium, the same thing. Then lastly, two nitrates on the left and two nitrates on the right, so that cancels. And that leaves us with a net ionic equation of cadmium plus two plus sulfide ion yields cadmium sulfide solid.